Hello and welcome back to the ninth episode on how to create your own programming language. So this episode is going to be a bit of a shorter episode and we're going to add a new string type to the language. So before this video starts, uh, please leave a comment on whether you prefer having uh, shorter videos more frequently or longer videos less frequently. So strings are going to be the same as just about every other language, uh, so we just wrap text around quotes. We are also going to add backslashes to escape characters, so if we want to put a quote in our string, uh, we can just escape it with a backslash. If you then want to put a backslash in the string, you can then escape that backslash with another backslash. And finally, we'll add in a few special cases, such as new lines. So if you escape an N, uh, it will be a new line instead of an N character. So we'll start as usual by updating the lexer. Uh, so what we want to do is add in a new string token type. So we'll update the lexer to create a token with this string token type if you come across a string. So string starts with a double quote, so we'll add in a check uh, if the current character is a double quote. And if this is the case, we want to append a new string token, so we'll create a new method called makeString. So we'll define the new makeString method. So we're going to need to keep track of the string value of this string token. We're also going to need to get the position start for the end of this method. And we're going to add this boolean variable called escape character, which we'll be using in a minute uh, for the character escaping. And uh, we also want to advance past the first double quote. So we'll create a loop that continues until we reach a double quote or until we uh, reach the end of the input. So if you check while the current character is not equal to none, then that checks that we haven't reached the end of the input. And then we also want to check while the current character is not equal to another double quote. So while we're in this loop, we can just append our string by the current character. And then we have to advance. So this loop stops when we come across a double quote, so we need to advance past that double quote. And then we can create and return a new token uh, with the string token type. Uh, we can pass in the string as the value, a uh, position start for the position start, and our current position will then be the position end. So now we need to add in character escaping. So in our while loop, we are going to check if the current character uh, is equal to a backslash, and to check for a backslash in Python, you have to put two backslashes, uh, because you have to escape it. So if we come across a backslash, then we know we want to escape the next character, so we're going to set escape character to true. But otherwise, we can continue as normal and append the character to the string. So first of all, if we come across a double quote, but this double quote is escaped, we don't actually want to break out of the loop. So we will add in our escape character to the end of this condition. So even if we do come across a double quote, uh, if escape character is true, so we are um, escaping the double quote, it will then continue this loop. So we now want to reset escape character to false at the end of every loop. So now we want to add in a check if we are escaping the character. And if we are, all we have to do is add that character to the string, and we don't have to do any of the other checks. So we'll put the rest of the checks in an else statement. So we'll add one more thing to this function, and that's if we escape certain characters, it will be replaced with another character. So if we escape an n character, uh, so backslash n, we're going to replace that with a new line. And if we escape the t character, so backslash t, uh, we will replace that with a tab character. So we'll add in an escape characters dictionary here, and we're going to set all the replacements. So we'll set n to a new line, and we will set t to a tab. So now when we are escaping the character, instead of just adding that character, uh, we will now use the escape characters dictionary, and we will get the replacement depending on the current character. But if there is no replacement, we want to just add that character as before. So we can put self.currentCharacter as a second argument, and this will use that second argument if there is no character replacement in that dictionary. So that should be it for the makeString method. So what we have to do next is update the grammar rules for our language, and this is very simple. All we have to do now is allow strings inside the atom rule. So we'll update that rule in the parser, but before we do that, we need to add in a new string node. So this is entirely identical to the number node, so we'll just copy and paste that, and we'll rename it to string node. So we can now come down to the atom method and check for the string token. So we'll copy and paste this and we will change it to a string. And then we want to change this to a string node. So that's actually it for the parser and then we need to move on to the interpreter. So we need to start by adding in a new string value. So we'll add in this all the way down here. So class string and this is going to inherit value. In the init method, we are just going to take in the value. We'll call super.init and then we'll assign self.value to value. 
So we're going to add two operations to the string value. The first one is going to be the add operation. So this will concatenate two strings together. And the other one we're going to add is a multiply operation. So if we multiply a string by a number, that will then repeat that string number times. So we'll start with the add operation. We want to make sure we're adding another string. And we'll return a new string and we'll concatenate self.value with other.value. And we need to copy over the new context for this string. And then we can return none for the error. But if we don't add another string, we'll return none for the value. And we can return an illegal operation for the error. So now we'll do the multiply operation. So this time we want a number as the second operand. So we'll again return a new string. And we'll then multiply self.value with other.value, which you can actually do in Python to repeat a string multiple times. So again, we need to copy over the context. And we'll return none for the error. And again, we'll return an illegal operation if we don't uh, come across a number. We'll also implement the isTrue method for the string. So we're just going to copy how Python does it, or at least I think that's how Python does it. So a string will be considered true if there is at least one character in that string. So we'll just check if the length of the string is greater than zero. We also need, like every other value, a copy method. So this will create a new string and pass in the same value, and then it will set the position and the context of the new string, and then return this copy. We'll also add in a representation method. So now we need to update the interpreter to create this new string. So we'll add in a new visit string node method. And what we want to do is return a new string value. And the value for this string is going to be node.token.value. So in the string node, we get the string token and then we get the value of that token. We then need to set the context and the position of this value. So we can now return that and we will wrap it in a runtime result success. So that's it and we can now run the program. So we'll run the program and we can now use quotes to create a string. We can concatenate strings and we can multiply strings. So this means we can now use strings and functions. So we'll create a greet function. This will take in a person that we are greeting and an emphasization. So how much we are emphasizing the greeting and we'll return hello multiply by emphasization and we'll add the person's name to the end. So if we now say greet code pulse with an emphasization of three, and we now get hello, hello, hello code pulse. So yeah, that's it. Strings are now working in our language. So that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and in the next episode, we will be adding in lists. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in episode 10.